I've been using these guys, copper scrubbies, to pack my column, well, since I started distilling, basically. But I've just got my hands on some of this stuff. Spiral prismatic packing. <laughs> I've seen people talking about this and using it for a long time and it promises to basically do a whole lot better job than, uh, than these guys here. So, let's uh, put a little test together, put them head to head and see who comes out on top. How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still It's the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Uh, if you don't know, we make stuff, we taste stuff, we mess with stuff and uh, every now and again we experiment with stuff to see uh, if it does exactly what it say it's going to do. Like this stuff right here, SPP. Uh, one of the New Zealand crew is actually making this here in New Zealand and he sent it to me. So Full disclosure, yes, he sent it to me. Uh, no, I'm not being paid to do any of this. I've got no dog in the fight. I just wanna try it and see basically how it works and what it does. Now, this, like I said, isn't a new thing. Um, well, it's kind of new for distilling, but not crazy new. It's not like I'm breaking ground on this or anything. Uh, I'm, once again, like I always do, standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, but the idea is that this stuff sort of promises to be a much more Efficient, I guess you would say, packing for your column. Uh, the long and short of it for us, for home distillers, is you can get either a higher ABV than what you were getting, or you can use a shorter column, uh, less amount of the stuff to get the same ABV that you were getting. That's the claim anyway. So, uh, let's talk really quickly about basically how these things work. And the idea is that they have a whole lot of surface area that forces the interaction between vapor and liquid uh, which helps us out with reflux. If, you, if you're baffled and you're new to distilling and you don't know what I'm talking about with reflux you probably want to go and watch uh, this video here which is going to help you out a whole lot and then you can come on back to this if you want to. So uh, the reflux happens because of the surface area. It forces the liquid coming down the column to take a long path to get down to the bottom and it gives a whole lot of surface area to force interaction between the two, uh, stripping the lighter compounds out of the liquid, forcing them or sending them up through the column and doing the inverse with the heavier compounds and sending them down to the bottom, giving us a higher ABV. That's why we can make uh, vodka in a packed column, in a reflux column, uh, without having to do a shit ton of you know redistillations through a pot still this stuff is a little bit of an enigma and i'm not going to go into it too much in this video this video is literally just a test to see if it's going to do what it says it's going to do and i say that because it's a whole lot more dense it's i mean these scrubbies would pretty much pack that jar and it's it's like five times the weight it's crazy so in terms of surface area uh, at least to weight it, it's a whole lot lower um, and there are theories on on why it is able to do its job uh, but like i said that's going to be for further down the track if i end up using this stuff regularly we can go into that right now we're devising a little experiment to see if it's actually going to work this is how we're going to go about it team the column from my still the part that i normally pack with copper scrubbies and I'm going to do that exactly the same this time. So the idea is that we're going to run this once with copper scrubbies and then we're going to take the scrubbies out, fill it up with SPP, although we'll need a couple of scrubbies just to hold it all in there. Um, and we're going to do a good old fashioned shootout between the two and see what happens. It would be silly to make this test easy on the packing uh, and for that reason I want to make it difficult for both of them to try and see if we can push the results a little bit further apart or that's not true I don't want to push them apart I want to give them the opportunity to be apart so uh, let me get the rest of the scrubbies into this let me get the still built and then I'll show you what I'm going to use to test them Yes, for this kind of thing, I would uh, generally prefer to run my CCVM setup, which is the coil in the top of that T, and you adjust the amount of reflux by moving the, the coil up and down. Uh, 
I busted a tube, but I don't have a replacement. So we're just gonna use the deflate. <laughs> In the pot, I've measured 15 liters of water. Now the volumes aren't really meaningful. I'm just telling you what I've done so you can follow along. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is add 300 mils of 94% ABV on in there. So we're gonna end up with a pretty low, it's gonna be a little bit under 2%. So we're gonna end up with a little under 2% in the pot here, uh, giving any difference in the two packings and ability to really shine uh, over one another. Cool, let's get it stuck in, get the still heated up, and then uh, get to distilling. The still is heating up in the background. You can probably hear it coming over the audio. Uh, the last part of this little experiment that I haven't explained to you yet is we're gonna take the first 250 mils uh, of product on both runs, and then we're gonna compare them and see if there's an ABV difference. Obviously, I'm trying to keep as many variables as I can the same, um, off-take speed, uh, the amount of water going through the condenser, the amount of power going into the pot, all of those things, but obviously it's not overly scientific. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens at the end though. 250 mils produced with the copper packing. I'm not gonna take a reading on this yet because I wanna wait until we got both side by side and for it to be a surprise for me as well. Now I need to break the still down, get the copper packing out uh, and get some of this stuff in there. The plan, the plan is to just use a couple of copper scrubbies to hold it at the bottom of the, the column. Uh, so I wanna test that to make sure that it doesn't all come falling out mid run. But uh, yeah, hopeful. That's holding really well. And the columns are completely full of the packing. I'm just gonna chuck another one of these. And on top, let's get set up. While the still is heating up for our second run, the SPP run, I just thought it would be wise to mention that the residual heat in the still was another thing that I accounted for in terms of variables I wanted to control. So. I'm not exactly sure how that would affect things, but for me it was mostly in the heat up time and the amount of reflux that would happen in the column as the vapor was pushed up and condenses to heat everything up. Uh, so I left the still overnight. It's now tomorrow <laughs> or today and that was yesterday or whatever, time travel, I don't know. Suffice it to say that that's another variable that we can uh, cross off that's been somewhat accounted for. Let's test this stuff and see, um, see what the results are. Uh, I've got a lid so we can give this a shake. So what do you reckon the proof is, guys? Oh, wait, we've got a thing called an alchemeter. Jokes aside, guys, let's, uh, let's test this. <laughs> so we'll do the copper first. As you may have guessed, this uh, bench is not entirely level. <laughs> That's better. Uh, just under 70%. And here's the moment of truth, guys. I honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, truthfully, I haven't tweaked any of this stuff. I've just run it as is, um, and I haven't tested it yet. So you're gonna be as surprised or not surprised as I am. What have we got? Oh yeah, yep, 85%. Actually, I lie, 86%. <laughs> well, there you have it guys, uh, and like I said, I haven't tweaked this really at all uh, to operate in a different way for the SPP, so I might even be able to milk slightly more out of that. My rig and the way I ran that was set up the way that I run copper scrubbies. Um, Honestly, that 70% is not bad considering there's only 2% in the, in the pot if I was running, you know, vodka. For example, I'd be almost exclusively using uh, low wines at probably 30% and I'd be hitting, you know, 94% pretty easily. Uh, with this, I've got no reservations whatsoever. I'm sure I would be hitting azeotrope uh, with my setup in, in that situation. And I have been thinking for a long time about extending my column, like another 30 centimeters, just having another, um, like another modular piece that I could pop on the top with another tri-clamp for, specifically for vodka, because I'm not quite hitting azeotrope. Uh, with this, I don't think I need to, to be perfectly honest with you. I think, I think this is gonna turn into my uh, daily driver 
when it comes to running reflux in my column, for sure. <laughs> so, a few more things coming up, but first, I need to say a huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. You're the reason I get to mess around with stuff like this, to experiment with things like this, and I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're out there and you find value in these videos and you'd like to help uh, contribute directly as well, you can go to chasethecraft.com support to find out all the different ways you can help out. One of them being, if it's right for you, Patreon. This, like I said, was sent to me by uh, a guy making it here in New Zealand. The stuff, <laughs> the stuff's not cheap because I got to assume it's a complete pain in the ass to make. So props to the dude who I didn't ask if I should mention his name specifically or not, so I won't. Um, but you know who you are, so thank you. Uh, if you're in New Zealand and you're thinking about buying some of this stuff, I would wholeheartedly suggest that you go on to Trade Me. I'm going to put a link down in the description below for you to follow uh, and you can buy it off the same guy that, that sent it to me because right now your alternative is to buy it from overseas and I think it's like literally Russia and Poland. If you're overseas in a different place um, I will have a quick hunt around for you see if I can find some links and uh, drop it in the description down below so you can go find it down there. If you think this experiment if I if you think I've gone about it in the wrong way or you think I could have done something better by all means drop a comment down below um, let me know how you think I should have done it and if you have tried it and used this stuff yourself if you have tried SPP please guys do the same drop your uh, your findings what you found uh, it to do better or to not do better or you think it's well worth the investment or it's not worth the investment whatever it is drop your comment your findings down below as well guys because um, it's nice to have a little bit of numbers on something like this. It's not just this dude ranting and raving about it. Um, there's other people out there that you can go and check the comments, you know. You, you know what I mean. It's kind of like reviews. Put your reviews down below. <laughs> All right, team, uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a whole lot. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button because we are so freaking close to 100,000 subscribers right now. It's not funny. I think we'll hit it in the next few days. So help me out there, guys. Let's get over 100K and and I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.